<laughs> if you guys could tell me who you play and how they fit into this story. I play Count Adreni and uh, I'm a famous ballet dancer and I have a beautiful wife. And I play the Countess Andreni, ex-ballet dancer. Um, and yeah, and there are a couple who are very much shrouded in mystery. Because mm. I mean, it's, it's, an, it's quite an incredible cast. I mean, you must have looked around at times on this kind of, well, this sort of fake train and just thought, wow, I mean, the, the quality of, of uh, the, the credentials of the people who were starring in this movie must have just been quite overwhelming at times. Yeah, it was really surreal and very intimidating, especially on your first day to look down at the line of faces and see um, those. But yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. And so, so, I mean, you must have been, is this acting something you've always kind of harbored, a, a, an ambition you've always harbored, something you've always wanted to do? Because is this your first yes. sort of acting? Yes, role, yes, it? yeah. uh, it's the first time. And uh, since I was a kid, I, l I wanted to be part of it. And it's kind of the only magical world that was left. And I wanted to explore it and to be in it. But um, yeah, no, and I couldn't ask for better, better people to be around. But on the many levels, uh, incredible actors, incredible director, incredible crew. So everything was, wow. Because I was uh, interviewing a musician recently who did their first acting role, and they said that they've performed at Wembley and they've performed in front of oh, tens of thousands of people. But they were, they've never been as nervous as their first day on on set. Was that quite similar to you? Because it just as it be, being yeah, I remember new... being scared. Yes, yeah. definitely. It's and but you have to step up. You have to you know you have to forget what's who is around and where you are and and be yourself. And sort of space wise, how was this to, to shoot? Because I mean, obviously by their very nature, trains are quite sort of narrow. <laughs> so was it ever quite claustrophobic on set or did it, was it all quite opened up to make it quite easy for the actors in this instance? I think it's the original size of the Orient Express carriages, so it was definitely compact. Uh, but that I think only worked in our favour in kind of creating that claustrophobia in the film. And I was uh, speaking, uh, to, well, I mean, Josh Gad, obviously, his interrogation of Daisy Ridley was all sort of captured on camera and he was doing lots of tweets and stuff like that. And I was just speaking to Tom before and he said he kept playing uh, tricks on people as well. I was wondering if you guys can recall any kind of firsthand, any sort of tricks or pranks that people were playing on others. No, I remember like on my first day coming into the makeup trailer and they were laughing because they had like super glued Marwan's stuff to his trailer surfaces. Like his breakfast, I think, was like super glued to it or something. So it's a nice introduction to the film. Yeah. And uh, did you guys sort of uh, bother reading the novel or watching kind of other film to try and learn more about your characters? Or did you actually prefer to, to treat this more just as a um, this particular interpretation of the role and try not to have other sort of um, other people's interpretations to kind of uh, muddy your own existence? Yeah, I'd seen the film before, but deliberately avoided seeing it again closer to the time. Um, just to kind of let this film be as it is. But I read the book, um, definitely. And, but then, yeah, I mainly used the script as kind of my Bible for reference. I watched TV series and uh, read the book, but haven't watched the, <clears throat> the movie. So yeah, b bits and bobs and getting, of course, digging into your own, your, yourself. And it must be so much fun in this instance to work, like, because I imagine, well, when we're sort of growing up and want, people want to be, become actors, it's all about sort of that kind of notion of, of the world of make-believe, I suppose. It's all kind of running around pretending to be like a cowboy or something like that. But in this film, with all the, the, the dialect and the, the costumes and the whole kind of electric candle-like kind of look of it and the smoke from the train, did it really feel like you'd stepped into a kind of classic Hollywood movie? And that must have been such an exciting thing, I suppose. Completely, because you assume that you're going to have to kind of fill in the gaps and work hard to place yourself there in the period and in the place. But, I mean, the set was so exquisite that all those details were there for you and when you walk on to, into those stations or onto the train, sorry, I'm just <laughs> like dying. Hungry, hungry. Um, but when you walk, yeah, onto the, into the carriage or into those incredible interiors, you're just there. and. The work is done for you. Just finally, Lucy, because you're in Bohemian Rhapsody, obviously, which is coming out. I mean, Rami is such good casting for that role. I mean, I'd be so excited to see it. What was it like to shoot that film? It's so much fun. And, yeah, I mean, I remember we were shooting Live Aid first and walking onto set and seeing him in all of his Freddy-ness and moving and dancing the way that he does. It was a real shock and yeah it was incredible to see it's been a lot of fun oh great can't wait to see it well thank you so much for your time thank you thank you, thank you. Much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. sorry for my stomach <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys!